It's Friday, May 13th. I'm David Song, currency analyst with Daily FX, and we're seeing the US dollar extend the event from early in the week, following some of the positive data prints from early this morning, where we did see US retail sales, producer prices, as well as the U of Michigan confidence survey largely beat market expectations. Nevertheless, and despite the bullish market reaction in the greenback, we're still seeing Fed funds futures price in a less than 10% probability for a June Fed rate hike. So we'll see if we get a little bit more of a dynamic shift in market expectations going forward. But as we do have a lot of key event risk on tap next week, a lot of data coming out of the UK, even for Australia. And of course, as we'll kick off the week with the Reserve Bank of Australia meeting minutes, we'll keep a very close eye on the Aussie dollar exchange rate as it also slips to fresh monthly lows here. And we'll see if we get a further decline over the days ahead. But for now, we'll Keep a very close eye on the RBA's tone after the central bank reduced the cash rate there to a fresh record low of 1.75%. So personally, on my end, I wouldn't be surprised if the RBA endorses more of a wait-and-see approach over the foreseeable future as they see the impact of those record low rates on the real economy. But we are coming up into a key juncture here for the Aussie dollar exchange rate. We're coming into former resistance zones from all the way back in February, where once we got that meaningful break of that back, uh, back in March, we, ha- we had that meaningful advance to fresh 2016 highs, but we're coming back against, again, the 7240, 7270 zone here. So if we're able to break close below that region, which also coincides with that 200-day moving average, we'll favor some further downside risk, next level of interest coming in right around that 7180 zone. Nevertheless, we'll keep a very close eye on the relative strength index here. We continue to see some bearish formations take shape carried over from early in the year. But right now, and as we're approaching oversold territory. One thing I would really like to see is the oscillator break below 30 to be suggestive that the bearish momentum may continue to gather pace over the near term. But as market participants are looking for some steady wage growth figures out of Australia, along with the pickup in job growth, we'll see how this will all pan out next week. And if we do see a less dovish tone coming out of the RBA, may act as a near-term catalyst to spur a near-term rebound in the exchange rate. So we'll see how that will all fare. But near-term, we'll continue to watch the 7370, 7390 zone here as near-term resistance after the failed attempt earlier in this week to get back above those levels. But of course, with the bigger picture here, it looks as though we may see some further downside risk as we largely given up the advance from early in the month, broken down from the bull trend from early in the year as well. But for now, we'll also keep a close eye on the dollar index as this one is also approaching a key juncture here. And after we got that close, finally above that 11,898 hurdle, looks like we may be in for a test of this downward trending channel that we have from early in the year, along with a key Fibonacci overlap on my end, right around that 11,950 into the 11,965 zone. So even for next week, we do have a lot of Fed officials on tap. We'll see if they'll highlight an improved outlook for the U.S. economy, again, following some of the positive developments from early this morning. Not sure if they're going to give us anything meaningful, anything to chew on, especially in regards to the Fed June rate hike. Of course, that's coming up before the U.K. referendum on June 23rd. So I personally wouldn't be surprised if we do see the Fed continue to endorse this wait and see approach may see another nine to one split at the next quality meeting. But for now, we're at a big hurdle here. But if we're able to break close above this region, if we're able to break out of this downward trending channel, may open up some of the top side risk here. Next region of interest on mine comes in right around that 1250, 1260 zone. So we'll see if we get a meaningful push with the dollar next week as we had some good dynamics from earlier this morning. But for now, it looks as though market expectations are still very little change in terms of interest rate expectations. We'll see if that will continue to be the case as we go into the third full week of May. But of course, we may see the Group of Seven meeting, especially speculation around that meeting, take a lot of attention next week. So we'll see if we get any meaningful commentary from the global community of central bankers, from finance ministers, as we did see some interesting comments coming out of the U.S. Treasury earlier this morning with, of course, Mr. Jack Lew largely arguing that the, that the Group of Seven should stay committed to their communication about not, not venturing into competitive devaluation, especially with threats of again, Japanese officials continuing to call for a currency intervention. So we'll see how these, all, these big themes will continue to pan out in the days ahead. And with all that out of the way, have a great weekend and, of course, the best of luck on all your trades.